another day off the calendar. The best part of my day is just coming up. What do you mean? Dinner. I'm with you. Let's see what messages we have first. Then go out and order the biggest steak in town? Right. Anything important? No, nothing that won't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What's a joke? Ellen says to be sure and to have dinner. Come in. Hey, how'd you like to eat it? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Is that your helicopter outside? Yes, sir, ah, it is. What a beautiful machine. Beautiful. How glorious it must be to have mastered such a complicated piece of machinery. Swooping through the skies. Drinking in the beauties of nature, feeding your souls on the glories of the earth. That's just about all we have been fed today. Oh, youth. <laughs> what reserves of strength. <laughs> yes, sir. What can we do for you? <laughs> ah, yes, sir. Allow me to introduce myself. I am uh, Deacon Barrington. Well, I'm glad to know you, Deacon. My name's Martin. This is my partner, P.T. Moore. Ah, Mr. Moore. How do you do, sir? <laughs> Mr. Martin, a pleasure. A pleasure indeed. Deacon, uh, what church are you connected with? Well, I like to think that the whole world is a church. And in this church, I seek only to serve. Do you understand? I think so. Now, what was it we could do for you? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, I understand that your helicopters are for charter. Well, they usually are, sir, but I think the store is closed for the day. Sure you wouldn't refuse some additional income? Well, now, isn't money the root of all evil? Ah, yes, young man. Only when it is in evil hands. Mine is an errand of goodness. Although this errand will bring me money. This errand, Deacon, where will it take you? Oh, Hartford. I am scheduled to deliver a lecture there this evening on the evils of gambling. Hartford? Well, now, why don't you take the bus? An excellent suggestion. However, I seem to have overslept. And what you're saying is, if you take the bus, you'll miss your lecture. Precisely. Now, tell me, what will your fee be for the round trip? And now, wait a minute. Uh, we didn't say we were going to take the job. Well, well, certainly. You will not hold back against a call for a good cause. Uh, Deacon, I think you better leave us out of this one. It wouldn't be worth it to us for less than $250 round trip, and I don't think you want to pay that. I shall not question the price. No. There is an aura of honesty about you which compels my trust. Well... Shall we go and nourish our neighbor's souls? Okay. Okay, but I wish someone were that concerned about nourishing me. <laughs> you first, Deacon. Uh, do you mind uh, if I ride outside? Oh, not at all. We're coming over Hartford, Deacon. Ah, uh, Hartford, city of evil. I earnestly trust I shall leave it a better city than I find it. Well, it doesn't look very evil to me. Evil is insidious. It's never apparent. It strikes at the roots. And just what is striking at the roots of Hartford? Gambling. A gambling den has been opened. You're going to cure all this with your speech tonight? I shall do my humble best. Who's sponsoring this event, Deacon? Well, Mrs. Wilkins. She is head of the Women's Betterment Society. Well, that's very nice for her. Are we over the center of the city? Just about. Well, perhaps a few notices at the meeting might increase the attendance. <laughs>
Deacon Barrington? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How kind of you to meet me. It is very gratifying to see that this event interests the men of Hartford as well as the ladies. Oh, we shall need your help to stamp out this evil. Allow me to introduce my friends, uh, Mr. Moore and Mr. Martin. You are... We're the guys who are going to beat your brains out if you don't get back into the helicopter and leave town. I... I have already made arrangements with the young men to leave immediately after my speech. There better not be any speech. If there is, you won't need the helicopter to leave town. You'll leave in a box. Good day. Deacon, I don't think those guys are kidding around. We'd better not make that speech tonight. There is wisdom in what you say. I think I'd better leave Hartford and work in the vineyards elsewhere. Well, you know, uh, we might have time for a quick dinner before we leave. It might be advisable to leave now. Come on, let's get out of here. Deacon? Deacon Barrington? Yes, indeed, madam. Oh, I just knew it was you when I saw those pamphlets come fluttering down. I'm Mrs. Wilkins. Oh, it's so very nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Well, Deacon, we'd better... Uh, allow me to present uh, Mr. Moore and uh, Mr. Martin. I chartered their helicopter for the occasion. Gentlemen, Mrs. Wilkins. How do you do? A helicopter. Oh, how exciting. Mrs. Wilkins, uh, I... I'm sure the evening will be a huge success. Deacon, you're not going to that hall and speak tonight, are you? Of course I am. Was there ever any doubt about it? Well, no. well, don't you think you ought to have some policemen there? Police? Well, I mean to handle any disorder in the crowd. Oh, I don't think that will be necessary. But, but I would prefer not to have the police interfere in this matter. But Deacon, I feel get... certain there will be no <clears throat> disturbance, uh, not in front of so many people. I hope you're right. Well, now, let's go inside and we'll all have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> this city depends upon you, its honest citizens. This is a war against evil. <laughs> there will be casualties in this war. There will be casualties perhaps even before the night is over. But the forces of evil must be stamped out. The gamblers must be driven from our fair city. Gambling is a dreadful and evil thing and must be wiped out. Those men who brought gambling to this city are dreadful creatures and deal in sin. They must be shown no mercy. They must be dealt with firmly and harshly. They must be dealt with Yes, they must, uh, <coughs> they must be dealt with. It, it, is, it isn't going to be easy, but, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it isn't going to be easy. But it must be done, indeed it must. And in conclusion, I say to you, fight! Show them no mercy! Thank you, thank you. It's very gratifying to you so many good people turned out for so good a cause. Oh, I did want there to be a goodly crowd. I was so enthusiastic about your coming, actually. I, I, I'm afraid I've d done something dreadful. Oh, Mrs. Wilkins, it is not possible to believe that you have done something dreadful. But I have. In my enthusiasm to have people come, I gave out so many free tickets. I haven't enough money to pay for the hall. There's scarcely enough to pay you, Deacon. No, no, good lady. All the money is yours. I will take nothing for my feeble efforts. Oh, but you must. Well... Well, if you insist, there still isn't enough to pay for the hall, but... Oh, you are a good man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> well, Leakin, I'm sorry you talked yourself out of that. So am I, so am I. But it's not myself I'm concerned about. I'm used to adversities. I'm concerned about you boys. About us? Why? I was counting on that money I should have made tonight. What do you mean, counted on the money? To cover that check I gave you. Y you mean... No good. I can't tell you how sorry I am. How can a man like you, with all this good works in the vineyard stuff and... How can you deliberately write a bum check? Remember, my boy, to err is human. To forgive, divide. Well, Deacon, I hope you'll forgive us if we pick up our helicopter and go home. Now, look, Deacon, you're in trouble. Those guys are outside waiting for you. You can't leave the building. Why don't you call the police? I think you'd better. There's a pay telephone right backstage. Oh, thank you. Did you say pay? Be Thank my you. guest. Thank you. I am sorry about that check. I, I do hope you believe me. <laughs> All right, Deacon, we do believe you. Make you feel better? Ah, yes. Ah, yes, indeed. I am gladdened by your faith in me. Don't count on it too strongly. You make a habit of giving out bad checks? Only when necessary. And in a good cause. Okay, what's the trouble around here? Hi, Sheriff. I'm glad you got here so quickly. And who are you? Well, my buddy and I run the helicopter that brought the deacon into town. We think the deacon's in trouble. Two men threatened to beat him up if he made his speech here tonight. We think they're waiting outside someplace for him. Hey. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Oh, I hardly think so, sir. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, you ran that hokey-pokey Lonely Hearts Club in Bridgeville back four or five years ago. It was merely my humble effort to find companions in love and marriage for lost and lonesome souls. You've led quite a varied career, haven't you, Deacon? There are many ways to serve one's fellow creatures. I thought I told you then I didn't want to see you around these parts anymore. Oh, I've enjoyed my brief stay in your fair city, but uh, I would like to leave now, uh, if I could. And who are these two monkeys that threaten to beat you up? Oh, I do not know their names. We haven't met formally. I hardly think they're my sort of people. Anybody with a loose nickel is your sort of people. Sheriff, maybe I can help you out. Yeah? One of them weighed about 160, the other about 185, both about 5'11", nicely dressed and dark complexion. Well, that sounds like Anders and Fleming. They run a gambling house in the Northridge section. Every time I raid that place, they're clean. I've been trying to get something on them for weeks. Well, this looks like your chance. You think they were serious about slugging the deacon? Yes, sir, they were serious. Well, if it's Anders and Fleming, they would be. You flying the deacon out here tonight? Well, no, we, uh, we thought we'd go on. Well, I'll tell you what, they'll probably try to get you someplace between here and the airport. I'll put you in a taxi and follow along in my car, and then when they make their move, I'll take them. You're very kind, sir. I appreciate what you're doing for me. All I'm doing for you is running out of town. I want to nab those gamblers. Come on, I'll get you a taxi. Hey, that sheriff is sure following closely. Yeah, he is. You now, those gorillas are not likely to make their move with the sheriff right on top of us like that. I know. Now, look. Just keep out of this and you won't get hurt. All right, Deacon, out. Well, let us not resort to violence. Let there be love and understanding. Out. Just stay put there, buddy. I've been trying to figure out where I saw you before. Remember Albuquerque? Albuquerque? No, no, I... You remember. You called yourself Wildcat Saunders then. That was a great lot of oil stock you palmed off on me. I use it to paper my dining room. It keeps me from overeating. I lose my appetite every time I look at it. Ah, gluttony is wonderful. 
I've got lots of reasons for not liking you. Come on. I want to show you just how much. to the sheriff. I don't know. Let's find out. Helicopter 75 Bravo to the Hartford County Sheriff. Helicopter 75 Bravo to the Hartford County Sheriff. Come in, please. Over. Hartford County Sheriff to 75 Bravo. Where are you? We're at the airport, Sheriff. Where are you? I had a flat tire. Oh, fine. Now, listen, Sheriff. Those two mugs showed up, and they took the Deacon off in their car. They're headed west on Highway 45. It's a late model, light tan four-door sedan. I didn't get the make. That doesn't give me much. Well, I'm sorry, Sheriff. It was dark, and things happened fast. I got the license number. Uh, wait a minute, Sheriff. We got the license number. KEW-031. KEW-031. And, Sheriff, you'd better move faster. I think you're going to have a murder case in your hands. And what are you going to do? Well, look, Sheriff, we're tired, beat, hungry, and we've had it. We're going home. Oh, no, you're not. You brought the deacon into this county, and you're going to help to get him out. You pick me up on Highway 45, about five miles from the airport, and make it fast. Over. Okay, Sheriff. 75 Bravo out. that license number. I keep my eyes open. Well, the deacon may be getting his eyes closed for keeps. I've alerted all the cars, hoping to pick up the trail, but those are more are... calling sheriff. Go ahead, Vore. We're following the car, Sheriff. License KW-031. Which way are they headed? Going north toward Northridge. They're probably headed for the club. Good work. Keep after them. I'll be there in five minutes. Let's go. on your frequency. Calling all cars vicinity in Northridge. Calling all cars in the Northridge vicinity. This is the sheriff. Proceed to the Heidi Ho Club. Approach with caution and await further orders. You expect trouble, Sheriff, huh? Trouble may be over. That's a tough bunch the Deacon's up against. He may not make any more speeches anyplace. He was really a character. Couldn't help liking him. He wasn't such a bad old guy. He just figured there's a sucker born every minute and somebody's going to take him. And he might as well do the taking. We ought to be about over that club by now. That's it. Can you land this thing a little quietly? We'll land by auto rotation.
Is that the car? That's right. Anybody around? There's a light in the main room. Well, let's go. friends, my little ivory friends, show me your smile. Smile on me once more in the vineyard with seven happy faces. It's for a good cause. Seven happy faces. Seven. Blessings on you, my little friends. Blessings on you. All right, nobody move. What's going on here? Good evening, children. Just a friendly game of chance to relax the work of the vineyards. Just a friendly game. Friendly? He's pretty friendly with those dice. Is this why you kidnapped him? Just to shoot crap? Hey, this monkey could talk his way out of a bear trap. He talked us into coming down here to roll double or nothing for what he owes us. One roll, the guy said. <laughs> that was over an hour ago. All for a good cause, friend. All for a good cause. Have you still got that unfortunate chick? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed, Deacon. Or perhaps you would prefer cash. I'll take that. This money's confiscated. All right, run all these guys in. Go on. And you, get this guy out of here before I change my mind. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. I hope we meet again in more fortunate circumstances. If your luck holds, you and I will never meet again. Get him into that fine taxi of yours. So, this is how you guys make a living. Not tonight, Sheriff. Not tonight. Like the sheriff forgot something. Well, we're going to get paid after all. Honestly, I've always maintained is the best policy. Of course, you shall be paid for your fine and worthy efforts. Thank you. Unless... Uh-oh. Unless what? It occurs to me I have a certain obligation to that dear lady, Mrs. Wilkins, who is faced with the necessity of paying for the hall in which I spoke. What shall I do with the money? choice, my dear young friends, is yours. B.T.? Well, some nights you just can't make a dollar. Bless you, gentlemen. Bless you. 